My name is Emily Fonwell Oge of Let Us Farm. So you are welcome to Let Us Farm. Today, we shall be discussing why most times you notice your catfishes always die when you change water. This has been a source of worry to many catfish farmers who have seen this. And they don't know why this thing happens. So we shall be looking at it and look for a way forward to stopping this trend. Now, in case you are just joining us for the first time, this is Let Us Farm page. And all we do here is we provide practical solutions to solving our agri problems. If you must call me for any situation, please do that on WhatsApp. I will surely answer the call. Then if you have any message to pass across, you can also send a message to the WhatsApp or drop it in the comment section below. Please, I don't like people calling on the landline. I may not pick your call, and I don't want to do that. I have many calls on that line. So but if it is WhatsApp message, anytime the WhatsApp is on and you call me, I will surely pick, meaning that that time I'm ready to answer any call from any one of us. Please, do not be offended for this, but it's for all of us. Remember, I have other things to do, so it can't be only this that I face. I haven't said that. So you can follow us on any of these platforms, and any issue, we shall always tackle that and get you the best result. So I will be right back to discuss this. Welcome back. So, like I said, we are looking at today is why fishes die, especially during water change. You know, some farmers I may have noticed that that sometimes when they are changing water, they notice that some fishes die at that period. But some that died before that period may be seen at that period that you may think that they actually died during this period. And in the other way around, some actually die during the period of water change. And what could actually be the cause of this? Now, this particular issue is mostly found on people that are using surface ponds. When I say surface ponds, I mean people that are using either concrete tank, tarpaulin pond, then rubber tanks, or things like that. They are the ones that mostly notice it. People that use etting pond don't have this problem. Now, the main reason why people that use surface tanks notice this issue is that when you see this, you should know yourself, within yourself, that you have actually overstocked your pond. You know, sometimes when I say things, many people actually doubt it. Why they doubt it is that they have a convention in their mind that what they are always doing is right. So when they now get a contradictory notion to that, they start to doubt. But in reality, when you doubt and you don't have a solution, you discover that your doubt is not really, doesn't really make any sense. <clears throat> you can only, excuse me, you can only doubt something when you have a counter solution to that. And that counter solution is actually working. But when it doesn't work and you still want to doubt, I don't think that it makes any sense. So now, most people that I've talked to, whenever I tell them that, you see, they overstock their pond, they bring one funny argument that this is what the pond sellers told me, uh, this is what uh, I was told. But in reality, you don't expect somebody selling something to demarket himself. And like I always say, people that sell tapolin pond, look, they are business people. They can't actually want to tell you exactly the, 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 the quantity that a pond may take. The reason why some of them do it is that when they tell you the actual measurement, you may not be able to afford and you will not want to buy. And sometimes why they say it is that they are ignorant. Most of them are not fish farmers. This is what they were told. In fact, some of them actually learn the act of making pond from another pond seller. And... Those pond sellers, most of them has, have never, ever reared fish with the pond they sell. So all they can guarantee is that, look, this pond will not leak. Leakage, they guarantee that. But even at the guarantee, sometimes there may be one or two errors and it leaks. <clears throat> so the reason why I'm saying this is that some of us, 
when we bring all these arguments, it's very funny that you start arguing with somebody that is not even practicing it, but is selling it. It's, it doesn't make any logical sense. So this is the situation. If you notice it in your eating pond, that could be another issue. It is not because of the water discharge. And I have seen many people on eating pond, that issue never happens. And the reason is that, you see, the eating pond has mud. So when you are changing pond and you overstock, what happens is that most of your fishes will go under the mud. Then few will be up. So with this, they have like an additional layer of protection that will not make them to have friction. But now, when you are using a tapulin pond or an etting pond, because you overstocked, when you are changing water, all of them will muzzle up together. And when they muzzle up together, this is what results in the death that you may have noticed. It's a simple thing that many people will not want to believe it. So that is the main situation. So people don't want to believe it, but that's a fact. So because they don't have any other layer that they could actually hide on, you remember, as water is going down, the fishes become surprised that, oh, where we are staying, all of a sudden, what used to be comfort to us is going down. So when this thing happens, when there is this element of surprise, you discover that most of the fishes start running up and down. So they start swimming, following where the water is going. That's why when there is flood or any issue, you discover that the fishes will always go with the water current. So when you are changing water, they are surprised. They want to follow the water current to make sure that they don't. They are not left dry. Now, in that process of following that water movement, what happens is that most of them will now packed together. So as they pack together, there is this struggle to still remain in water. Because remember, the water is going down. So there is this struggle for them to still remain in that water that is going down and not to be sustained without water. So in that process of them try struggling to do that, it is when that friction happens and the weaker ones that cannot withstand the impact of that struggle die. So this is exactly the situation that happens. It's not as if maybe there is any other magic. No. But in a pond where you have the normal spacing, when that issue happens, all of them have places to stay. So there's no issue of clustering together. Imagine a pond that is supposed to take uh, 100 uh, fishes. You now put 400. So you have overshoot by extra 300. So when that issue happens now, they start to pack themselves. So in that process of packing themselves, you have stampede. And some of them that cannot withstand that, they will die. It's the same thing that happens when you hear that there is stampede and people die. It's the same thing. So, but in this situation is that there is all about survival. So, those ones that cannot be able to withstand the impact of that packing, that stampede, you now see them dead and they float. So, this is just a simple situation. And now, the solution to this is make sure you don't overstock. But there, there are instances that farmers find themselves in this situation. Now, they don't have alternative pond. They don't have alternative pond. Like I always say, when you do this, the issue is that most of your fishes may not meet up with the sizing. But let's look at it in another scenario. What do you do? You don't have alternative ponds, no money for ponds, you have only money for feeding, and you will be okay with whatever your result is at the end of the day. Now, for you to stop this, there's a system that I normally give farmers. And if you use it, it's going to work. But remember, this system will not work to improve the size of your fish, no. But it's going to work to help you stop or reduce that death that happens when you are changing water. Now, the simple system I use is this. When you are now discharging that water, when the water you have discharged the water level to about 70% of your normal limit, what I mean by 70% is that the water size in your pond, you have reduced it to 70%. Now, it's remaining 30% and you are still removing that water. What you now do is you now introduce our flow-through system. So how do you do this flow-through system? You now open the inlet. That is, you now allow water to start entering the pond. The one going out will still be going out, though, but you do this when 70% of the water have already gone. So you now allow water to enter and allow water to keep discharging. Allow this situation to run between 
15 minutes and 30 minutes. So water is going out, water is coming in between 15 minutes and 30 minutes. So what happens then is that you've allowed most of the dirty water to go and you've allowed the clean water to replace it. But now you did not allow the water to finish in the pond. That's the logic. So after like that 30 minutes, what you do, you now lock your discharge and now put your normal water to the level. So when you do this, you discover that it's either you have eliminated completely the issue of these fishes dying or you have reduced it drastically that the mortality rate you will record will be so minimal. I have introduced this to many farmers that have this issue and they are quite okay and satisfied with the results. So in case you are having this same problem, do as I just said now and you will be happy you did. So is there anything I have said now that you don't understand? Is there anything that still confuses you about this situation? If you have any of these situations, drop it in the comment section and I will do well to answer you. If anybody contacts you for any WhatsApp group, kindly remember we are not forming any WhatsApp group for Lotus Farm. Anything you want to discuss, We'll discuss it here. So until I come your way next time, I remain yours, Noel Oge Emily Fong of Let Us Farm. Keep farming, it's a way of life. Hey y'all, come look at this.